So there's obviously a few things that we need to do after we've made a successful payment with Braintree. And that is just do things like mark the order as paid. We need to update the stock levels for the products that we already have in the products table. We need to empty the user's basket. And then if the payment was declined, we can record that as a failed payment. So let's start to think about how we're going to do this. And the first thing we're going to do is set up a payments model. So remember over in our database here, we have a payments table. This has the order ID that this relates to in our database. We have a failed, whether it failed or not, we have a transaction ID and a created at and updated at date. So let's create a model in here. Then this is our payment model and we can go and just pull this over as a kind of structure and we'll just update everything that we need to be able to be filled. So we change the name of the model. We can get rid of this here. And all we need to do is change this to allow failed to be entered. And we also want to be able to insert the transaction ID. And that is it. So let's add this to our container just so we have it available. So let's go and just copy this down. Go ahead and add this in like so return a new payment model and then we'll just pull this in at the top so everything works perfect so that's our payment model set up we can worry about that in a minute but what we need to do is set up something that doesn't allow us to enter loads and loads of code within here so we're going to set up event handling now we're going to do this by ourselves because it's not very tricky so we're going to start by creating a base event class from this, we can have as many events as we want. In our case, we just have one event. This is order was created. Now, as part of that, we're going to have lots of different handlers in separate classes, because what we want is for each of these classes to only be responsible for one thing. So it just helps to keep things nice and tidy. So we have our Braintree payment here. We can check whether this was successful down here in a moment, but let's just start to set up our event and our handlers. So inside of app, I'm going to create an event folder and inside of here, I'm going to create a base event so we can extend this when we want to create any other events. So the namespace for this will be cart event and we'll call this events actually. So let's just rename this folder. And now we have, if we just close this off so we can reopen it, a class of event. So the way this is going to work then is we're going to be able to attach handlers to a specific event. So let's say we have an order was created event, which is exactly what we're doing. So order was created.php. So this is going to be obviously under cart events and the class here is order was created. And that is going to extend our base event. So over an event, then once we have an order uh, was created event, we need to be able to attach handlers. Now these handlers are going to be things like empty basket uh, and do things like uh, mark an order as paid and all that kind of stuff. So we need a way to store these handlers to then run them after we have attached them. So we have a handler just here or rather handlers just here. And here we're going to have an attach method. This will allow us to attach an array of handlers or a single handler. So why don't we just look at our handlers first of all, and then we'll kind of uh, make this work so we can just see how it all works. So inside of handlers, then let's create a contracts folder. And this is basically going to be a handler contract, which will uh, allow us or make us implement a specific method because we're going to be calling that from our event class. So again, if this is confusing, it will make a lot more sense when we actually get down to using this, you'll see how it all works. So this is going to be our handler interface. So in here, let's just give this a namespace. So it's under cart handlers and contracts. So this is an interface and it's our handler interface. So what method does our handle interface have? Well, it has a handle 
method like so and into this we receive an event and that's all we need to do for that so why don't we just set up a handler just to test that this works so let's create an empty basket handler that's pretty straightforward so empty basket so we just name it exactly what it's actually doing and what this is going to do is implement that handler interface so let's start with our namespace and this is just cart handlers and the class is empty basket so this implements our handler interface so let's pull our handler interface in so use cart handlers contracts that's our handler interface so now we have to implement a handle method and we accept through here an event so what we'll do for now is we'll just kill this and we will say empty basket just so we know that this works so once we create or at least uh, instantiate our order was created event we can attach our empty basket handler and then when we run this it will do everything that's attached to it so inside of our base event then how do we actually attach a handler well the first thing to do is check if this is an array so if this handlers that's passed in happens to be an array we can loop through the handlers that we're attaching to this event so we say for each handlers as handler. Now we can do a check in here to say if it's not an instance of our handler interface. So we can go and just pull that up in here. So use cart handlers contracts handler interface. If it's not an instance of that, it means that we don't have a handle method on it so we don't want to attach it. Now, otherwise we want to say this handlers and then attach that handler. So now outside of this for each, we just want to return. And then down here, this point means that this isn't an array because it's outside of our if statement. So in that case, it's just a normal handler. So in here we can just say handlers like this. And of course, what we can do down here is say if handlers instance of handler interface or rather if it's not an instance of that we can just return so essentially what we're doing is we are attaching handlers to this event either by passing an array in or a single handler now we need down here a dispatch method so let's create a dispatch method and in here, we just want to loop through all of our handlers. So this handlers as handler. And then we want to say handler handle and then pass this event in. So this might seem complicated, but we're going to jump straight over to our order controller and actually use this now. So the first thing we want to do is create a uh, order was created event. So let's do that now. So event equals new cart events order was created now we then can attach our handlers so we can say event attach and we can pass an array of handlers now we know that we have a handler which is cart handlers empty basket and now what we can do is down here we can say event dispatch so we have an event we have a handler for this event we can add multiple handlers in here which what we'll be doing and then adding more into here and then when we dispatch we should see this die here so let's test this out and if anything goes wrong we can fix this up so let's just quickly fill this in and let's go and add our payment information in here so expiry tvv and our postal code and let's go ahead and place this order. So we get handler interface not found in our empty basket. That's absolutely fine. So what we do is we can just grab cart handlers contracts. 
Oh, and it looks like it's already there, so we just misspelled this uh, file name. So handler interface, and that should be fine. So let's refresh, and there we go. So we get a dump with empty basket. So let's leave this browser as it is, and we can just keep refreshing. We have all the form information in there already. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense, and we can have multiple handlers in here to do different jobs. So what we actually need then is all of the other handlers. So we'll outline these first of all. What we'll do instead is we will do a var dump within each of these, just so we can see that these are working. And then we will hook these up and do what they're supposed to do. So the next handler we want to create is to mark the order as paid. So let's just copy this over, create a new file. And this is going to be to mark order paid like so. And we'll just say in here, mark order paid. And we'll do the same here, mark order paid. And we can do the rest of them now. So we have uh, two payment ones, which is recording a successful payment and recording a failed payment. So in here we can create this. So record failed payment. And then in here we'll just write record failed payment. And we can do the same thing then for recording a successful payment. So record successful payment like so. And we'll just change this as well. Great. So we have uh, one more to create, which is updating the stock of the items that we've checked out with. So let's create a new handler, our last handler, and that is updating or rather update stock. Now, hopefully you can see the benefit. We have a lot of things to do here. And if we were doing these all within the controller and not having separate classes to handle these, it will get really messy. So let's just close all of these off and we will go back over to our order controller. And down here, we will attach the relevant uh, event handlers. So we don't want to attach all of these because obviously we have things like recording a failed payment, which we don't always want to do. But down here, we want to do at least updating stock. We want to mark the order as paid and we want to record a successful payment. Now, we're going to look at our result back from Braintree. And if it's the case that this happens to fail, remember earlier we looked at the response here. We can say result success. And if that wasn't a success, what we can then do is say event attach. And we can attach a new record unsuccessful payment or record failed payment. And then we can immediately dispatch this because we don't want to add any more in, we don't want to empty the basket, we don't want to update the stock, mark the order as paid, or record a successful payment. And if we do happen to have a failed payment, we're just gonna say response with redirect, and we will redirect back to the order index page. So we just do uh, what we already know, we just use our router to grab the path for order.index. So we'll force this to fail in a minute just so we can see that this works. But otherwise, we attach these events, so emptying the basket, updating stock and all that stuff, and then we dispatch. And just down here, we're going to die. Uh, in fact, we can just leave that as it is and just see a white screen. OK, so now what we should see is empty basket, update stock, mark order as paid and record successful payment when we go ahead and refresh this page. And it looks like I've called this failed full payment. So let's get rid of this. And of course, this isn't going to work at the moment because what's going to happen is uh, we've already basically used this token. So what we're going to have to do is just go back, which makes sense. We're not going to keep charging the user. We're going to go and just I'm just going to fill these uh, details in again. And once again, we'll come over here, enter our payment details. And we should, as long as we've not made any errors on our end, see them dumped out. So we empty the basket, 
we update the stock, we mark the order as paid and we record the successful payment. Great. So now let's just force this to fail. In fact, it will fail the next time around. It should at least because we don't want to keep charging that. So we redirected back, you see. So we want to, in that case, record a failed payment if the user's card was declined. And then otherwise, we'll just do these. So let's start with the kind of successful one. So emptying the basket, updating the stock. To be able to do these things, we need to pass into our event some dependencies. So we need to take in the order that the uh, user has created. So that's the order. We know that we, this comes from up here. And we also need to pass in the current basket. So we just say this basket and that's it. So now we can go over to our order was created event and we can create a constructor in here. And we can take into this an order and the basket. And we can type the hint these if we want. So we could say order and we could say we want this to be an instance of basket. And up here we can just say use cart models order and use cart basket basket. That just means that you know that you're getting them through. And then we're going to say this order equals order. And we'll do exactly the same thing for the basket. So now up here, we want to define public order and public basket. So we can access them within our event handlers. Now, how do we access them within our event handlers? Well, remember when we call dispatch, we call the handle method on each handler passing through the event. Now I know this is this and we're currently in event, but because this is a subclass, it will pass through the order was created event. So let's go through these one by one and just update them and then we can go and test them. So for emptying the basket then, this is just a case of saying event basket because we now have on here that public basket property and we just say clear, that will empty the basket. Of course, we no longer want the items in there, the user has checked out. So that's that one done. The next one is marking the order as paid. So for this one, we just say, event order update so this is now our model paid true done so that was easy and you can see this is nice because we're separating out this functionality into small pieces and they will only have one responsibility it's easy to know where to come when you want to update these so to record a failed payment then well what we actually need to do is uh, do something like this. So we need to say event order, so that order model. And then we need to say payment create. So we're creating now a payment record and we want to say failed true. Now, what's gonna happen here is it's gonna fail. This is, isn't gonna work because we don't have a payment relationship on our order model. So we can very quickly update this now in our models. So let's go over to order. And we need to down here say, payment and we just return this has one payment like so and we can go and pull this up here even though we know that we don't necessarily need to do that so there we go that's our relationship done and now if there was a failed payment for any reason we're now updating or we're creating a payment record remember in here from that order and that will automatically populate the order id and it will set this to true so now that we've done that, we can move on to a successful payment. So if we have a successful payment, what we want to do is say event order, and then we say payment create. And then into this, we know that failed is going to be false. We know that we have a successful payment and we want to insert the Braintree transaction ID. So where does this come from? Well, what we need to do is go over to back over to our order controller. And we need to, when we actually create this record successful payment, we want to take the response from Braintree, grab the transaction object and grab the ID from it. So now into successful payment, we actually have this property. So we can create a constructor for this. And this will take in the transaction ID. You could also pass the whole transaction in if you wanted, if you wanted to store anything else from the Braintree transaction result. 
but for now we'll just stick with the ID. So we're gonna say this transaction ID, transaction ID, and then up here we can have a protected transaction ID. So now we can just say in here, this transaction ID, simple as that. So we now lastly have update stock. So we need to update the stock for all of our items that the user has purchased. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop on this and we are going to say for each event basket all as product. Now what we're doing technically here is creating a query for each loop. Now there's nothing necessarily wrong with this, just uh, basically de decrementing the stock, but you might find a better way to do this. So go ahead and maybe have a look around. Either way, what we're doing is we're taking each of them products from our basket and we're saying decrement the stock and we're saying product quantity because we want to decrease the stock by the amount of quantity we have for that particular product. And that's all we're doing here. Okay, so now that we've got all of our handlers set up, let's just close everything off except our order controller and just make sure this is all working. So let's just go and uh, type in some card details again. In fact, let's go from through the whole kind of flow. I think this is probably better. So let's uh, get rid of these, I suppose. And let's go over and add maybe one of these. Let's just check the stock levels as well. I think to test this out, it's probably good to just set 10 for each of these, just so we know how many uh, we're de decrementing by. So let's have two of these and we will have maybe four of these and then we'll have a few of these, why not? And then we will check out, go ahead and enter my details. And then obviously enter our payment information. And now when we hit place order, this will obviously be a successful payment we should see, oh, okay, so we've got an un, uh, undefined index default. And I know the reason this has happened. I'm guessing it's because we've emptied the basket before we've done everything else. Emptying the basket should come last because obviously once we have emptied the basket, we don't have any products in there to go ahead and do anything like updating the stock with. So let's think about this. We need to mark the order as paid, uh, record a successful payment, update the stock and empty the basket, okay. So let's go back then and you see we have no items in the basket now. Let me just go through and add some of these and then we'll catch up on the order form. Okay, so I have some items in here then. Let's just check our stock levels. I don't think these will have been reduced. No, they're still all at 10. So let's go and check out and I'm gonna go in into my details again. And we'll go in into our payment information. So our expiry. And now what we should see is all of them events in the right order, because obviously we're not cleaning our basket. We now see a blank page, which is fine because we're not actually doing anything. Eventually what we'll do is redirect to the uh, order summary page, which we'll be doing in the next part. But now we should see over in orders, the last order we created was this one here, 7450. And we see it's been marked as paid, which is good. We see our orders attached, so 14. So I had one of them, four of them, and two of them. And over in payments, we say that we have a successful payment. So this is for this one here. This is the transaction ID. And then of course, over in products, we see the stock reduced. We've got a four reduced stock here, one reduced stock here, and two reduced stock here. So that is it, everything is working. And although that was again, a little bit of setup, you can use this event handler any way you want. So just create a new event, pass anything you need through to it. And then of course you can attach any of your handlers and then go ahead and dispatch that. So let's just finally look at what happens when we don't have a successful payment. So what I'm gonna do is just replace this with one. So this will always run. And let me go back and just fill this out again. We'll just add one item here now just to make this a little bit quicker. I'm gonna go and fill my details out. And we'll go and enter some payment details in here again. 
and let's go and place the order. So this should uh, purposely make it fail now and you can see that we're redirected back. So we'd have to enter payment details again. Of course, like I said, you can show a flash message here if you want to integrate that. Um, we have a series on that as well. So now that we have made this fail, let's just undo that so we don't forget. And over in payments, you can now see we have a failed payment. And I've just noticed that we didn't allow null on the transaction ID. So, oh, we did. So you could enter null in there. So what you could do is part of your, if we just go over to our handlers, record fail payment in here, you could say transaction ID null, or what you could do is set this to a default in here in your database as null. That might, might make sense rather than having to enter it in here as well. So there we go. That is our event handling after we have created a order. After we've taken payment, we just do all them things just to set things up. And we've done this in a nice clean way that doesn't get in the way in our controller. It means we don't have loads of code hanging around in here. If you wanna update the way that either of these work, you just go over and update your event handler. Thanks to Braintree Payments for supporting CodeCourse. Why make payment integration more difficult than it has to be? Braintree's full stack payment platform allows you to accept nearly any type of payment on any device with a simple integration. It's flexible and supports most programming languages. So with SDKs for .NET, Node.js, Java, Perl, Python, and Ruby, you'll always have a client and server side solution for your integration. Braintree makes payments and your job a lot easier. You can learn more at braintreepayments.com slash codecourse.